You know, we have homes burning right now. Um, there is no telling. It's, it's a very unpredictable fire. I think our fire service is going to be really asking a lot of their people tonight to put the extra resources to put them out. I think if we say days, that would give people an idea. And I would plan beyond three days. I would be looking at a longer term. We're talking about a fire that was preliminarily estimated to go a month. So there's going to be a lot of activity around here. And those people that are in the area right now that it's affected by this, it's going to be a while before they can get back in there. You have infrastructure considerations, utility considerations, and then there's a rebuilding process. Right here. Can you repeat the acreage and containment? Um, you know where we are? No, I you know, this afternoon when we were out here, uh, what did we estimate it at? 4,500, but the IRs tonight. Yeah, we'll have a better idea of that t tonight. Um, we're having that infrared flight flying right now, and as soon as we get that information, we'll share it with you. I saw a hand here. Yeah, we had viewers ask us, talking about more recent, this is the time you bring in the National Guard. I know some of them are trained in battling wildfires. I don't know if that's something discussed or not. I can speak to that, please. We, we have had generous offers from the military. Uh, General Anderson actually flew in here the day before yesterday. The issue with that is that it takes time to train them to put them in these positions. Like I told you, we've got our brothers and sisters from the north and from the south that are probably arriving as we speak. But again, th not even a mile from here, it, it is going on like you wouldn't believe as we speak. Our people are, are embedded deep into these areas, refusing to leave because that's what they're taught and trained to do. But the reality of it is, is there is, I just want you to know, and I know it, it's heart-wrenching when someone, like, like Sheriff talked about, when someone loses a home, and we're going to get a handle on that when this thing starts to die down and we get further in there. But the firefight's still going on as we speak. It's not like you can make a phone call and in five minutes you've got all these resources. Like I said earlier, your folks that are sworn to do this are doing it as we speak, and they're, they're, they're making a, a, a heck of a job over there. I was listening to it. We finally said, let's go up to the command post, saving house after house after house, constantly going on doing that. So I just want you all to know that this is not a defensive issue. We are offensively putting fires out in those homes as we speak. So let's, let's be very clear on that. It's, it's not like, let's write that off, write that off. That's not happening. They're, in the, they're right in the middle of it, doing their business like they're taught to do. And it's, a, it's an effort, a, a massive effort with what uh, Rich was talking about. It's, it's, it's city. PD. I mean, they're making rescues left and right, the Colorado Springs Police Department, in conjunction with us doing our business. But that's what it's all about, and it's going to be all night and probably days before we get a handle on what was lost and we go forward and get a tally on that. For clarification, I just came back. Okay, we are listening to that news conference right now. We'll get back to it here in just a moment. But uh, 32,000 people evacuated from this fire, multiple structures burned primarily in the Mountain Shadows neighborhood, and I think uh, we are back with the news conference now. Making sure that the, the needed vehicles are coming this way. So we will ask them to respond emergent to stage. But I have not heard any official reports like, like we were talking about of any injuries at this, at this minute. But I'm not also prepared to say that that's not going to happen. But we have not had any discussion about that yet. Good evening, Police Chief Pete Carey, Colorado Springs Police Department. I want to assure you, too, that the police department is in this fight 100 percent. We have about 100 officers on the ground. Uh, we've gotten calls from as far north as Aurora, from the Pueblo Police Department, with people in reserve ready to come down here. So in the next few days, you're going to see a lot of activity by the police department, controlling the ingress and egress, and, uh, and making sure that everybody's safe. So uh, we're in the fight, too, and we're here to support the fire department. Thank you.